My name is Ken Russell and I'm talking a little bit about mathematics and statistics. Now only one person mentioned mathematics and something you probably thought, I don't want to do any mathematics or statistics. Well, I've got some bad news for you. Whatever you want to do about maths, I can't help, but you have to do some statistics. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, just before I get through this, you know, the, my vast years of experience, I'd like to make just a, a couple of comments. The first is I look around the room and I can only see about two pencils and nobody taking any notes. Well, maybe you can remember everything from today, but please don't do that in lectures next week. Okay, you've got to be there taking notes. And even if things are recorded, you will still need to take notes. And I'm going to take, I'm going to differ with Celia. She said, listen to recordings. I strongly disagree. Don't listen. You're not watching TV. You're actually listening to a lecture. You need to be able to pause the button every now and again and take a few notes. Um, if your memory is not as good as you think it is, even at your age. And when you get to my age, your memory is definitely not as good as you think it is. So that was my first comment. And I'll have to come back to my second one because my memory is not as good as I thought it was. So let me just tell you a few things about maths and statistics. And the first thing is, one is, well, why would you even think of doing maths or stats if you don't want to be a maths or stats major? And it's basically because there's a huge shortage of mathematicians and statisticians in Australia. And that means there's going to be lots of well-paid jobs because it gets harder and harder to find people who are even mathematically competent. Think of most of the friends you had at school. They were mathematical klutzes, weren't they? I, I teach people in another faculty, which I won't mention, who think there are 48 weeks in a year. Why? Oh, there's four weeks in a month. Pull out your calculator, multiply that by 12, and you get 48. They're hopeless. Now, if, if you can demonstrate an ability in mathematics, I'm not saying, you know, a PhD in it, just an ability, then you're going to be much more attractive to people. Even if you don't work in maths and stats, but you've got that mathematical training and you can think logically, then that makes you stand out amongst prospective employees. It, it's not always the actual ability to do the maths, but you learn you know, a, a way of thinking that's more logical. You know, I've had people come to see me and ask me advice and they go away saying, gee, that was great. And I'm thinking, that was common sense. And I think maths and stats give you a little bit more of the common sense that some other subjects perhaps don't. I'm not rubbishing the other subjects, they, they don't just have the same way of thinking. Now, you don't spend all your time as a mathematician or statistician solving equations. In fact, you don't even do it in first year maths now. We've got computers that can, can, can do the factorizing for you. So none of that horrible factorizing and having to keep track of the double pluses and the double minuses and all those other horrible things. And don't ever believe anybody who tells you that the only people who use maths and stats are teachers. That's not right. Okay, now I just would like to stress that there are very, very, very many areas that do use mathematicians or statisticians, and I've listed a few. Agriculture, brewing, yeah. Some of you may have heard of Guinness's Brewery, yeah? Or, or Junker Guinnesses, anybody drunk? No, I haven't either, but you know, they're horrible black looking stuff one of their chief chemists be became famous not for his chemical contributions but his statistical contributions. Business, finance, government, health, meteorology, science in general. The list of people where you use, list of disciplines where you use maths goes on and on. And as I said, there are lots of jobs. Now, there's something here called maths ads. Unfortunately, I have only the one copy which we have to keep as a reference, but it's a list of jobs from the papers in the last year. And you, when you read through them, you see they don't all say 
mathematician or statistician. They may say financial analyst or, or quantitative something or other. But that's all shorthand for maths without scaring off people. And this website here, you can just simply download a PDF of this particular document. AMSI is the Australian Mathematical Sciences Institute. And um, I, I can send this to you afterwards if you like, Sue. Well, I'll even send you a PDF. I'll Now, just in case you think, oh, all the jobs in maths and stats are for males, no way. So let me just tell you, well, there's plenty of jobs for males, but let me just tell you about three of the, the people I know. Uh, Virginia Weewee, she was formerly Environmental Health and Safety Director for Boeing Australia. She's moved onward and upward since then, but if I tell you the title, it doesn't sound at all statistical, whereas you might think, oh, well, we do need statistics in environment, health and safety. And then there was Bronwyn Harch, who was previously the head of the CSIRO Division of Maths, Information and Statistics. She w worked in ecology and environmental sciences. She's now gone to be a professor at Queensland University of Technology. And then there's Robin Atwell in Canberra. She used to work as a con consultant giving statistical advice to various companies that would come and pay for it. And now she's finished up in the Australian Federal Police coordinating performance analysis. Now if you're going to measure performance, you're going to be collecting numbers. If you're going to be collecting numbers and analysing them properly, you're going to need statistics. Now forget the bloke on the right. He's probably not got much longer than I have left in the job. But the bloke on the left, that's Professor Terry Speed. He's a statistician and mathematician. He's in his mid-70s and he's still working in genetics and statistics. He works at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute in, in Melbourne, you know, tracing all sorts of genetic things. And he spends some time working at the university in California, and he spends a lot of time flying between them. But he was considered sufficiently eminent that he won the Prime Minister's Prize for Science in 2013. So you can go a long way with maths and stats. Now, you could do a minor in statistics. You have to do two subjects for your degree anyway. The first one, STA 201, is an introduction to statistics. And then STA 308 is experimental design and analysis because when you are planning how to collect your data and then to analyse it, you need a good bit of statistics. So those are compulsory units in the BSc. And it's not the statisticians that make you do them, it's the scientists who say, we need this, our students to have this, so you have to do it. Now, because you're all recording everything mentally when you weren't taking notes, you know from what Celia said that you have to have four subjects in a coherent pattern for a minor. Well, you've already got two there, and then at le you have to do at least two of the remaining Three, and I'm showing my age here because I've got SPA 402. Celia mentioned its, its new name, it's STA 502. But that, that was the one that she said, if you need to do it, talk nicely to her and she'll snap her fingers and everything will happen. So you do half of a stats major automatically. So if you do go through STA 201 and think, oh, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be, then you might like to think about doing a bit more. You can't do a major in stats. We don't have enough subjects. You can only do a minor. But you can do a major in maths, eight subjects, or a minor, four subjects. 
you would need to consult the course structure for full details. I don't want to bore you with it here. If you're doing analytical chemistry, then you've got to do Math 101 and Math 102, which are the two first-year subjects that, that do traditional maths, but also use the computer to do it. And if you do those, you've already got half of a minor in, in maths already. So it is possible, without doing a full extra four subjects, to do a minor in maths or in stats. Okay, I'm happy to talk to you after the meeting if you would like to ask any questions or you can send me an email. And I'm now trying to think hard. What was that other thing I was going to tell you? And it's gone. So, golden rule is write things down. Okay, when you go into the lectures. Don't just sit and think, oh yeah, I'll remember that because you won't. Um, anyway, good luck in your careers. First of all, your training and then your careers, whatever you do. And I hope your successes because the country needs them, especially in science and maths. Okay.